Hello everyone. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Faraz Kurban Rajpar. I am here to discuss with you medicinal chemistry. In this lecture, I am going to discuss about the biosynthesis of steroids. Different type of steroid hormone like cortisol, aldosterone and androgen hormone. In this lecture, we will look at the general pathway for the synthesis of these type of steroid hormone. At the end of lecture, I have compiled some short simple quiz for you so that you may evaluate yourself that whether you have gained the desired objective of today's lecture or not. Let's start. Let's look at the biosynthesis of cortisol hormone. So first of all, we will look the basic stimuli for the synthesis of cortisol. The synthesis of cortisol is initiated by certain type of stimuli. In the hypothalamus, region of the brain, paraventricular nuclei releases the corticotropin releasing hormone. This corticotropin releasing hormone will go towards the anterior region of pituitary. Anterior pituitary will then release adrenocorticotropic hormone. This adrenocorticotropin hormone will then goes toward the adrenal cortex and in adrenal cortex middle region zona fasciculata adrenocorticotropic hormone will responsible for the activation of g coupled protein receptor present in the membrane and over there adrenocorticotropic hormone will bind with the G stimulatory protein and that will initiate the GTP or stimulate the GTP. After that, adenyl cyclase will be activated due to which the conversion of ATP into cyclic adenine monophosphate take place. After this step, this cyclic adenine monophosphate or CMP will activate the protein kinase enzyme and these protein kinase enzyme will responsible for the phosphorylation or the activation of different type of enzyme which are normally occurring in the pathway of cortisol synthesis. So we have seen that the basic precursor for the release of cortisol from the zona fasciculata of the adrenal cortex region are the adrenocorticotropic hormone which is released in response of corticotropin releasing hormone. So now let's look at the different pathway mechanism by which cortisol is being synthesized from the cholesterol. So cholesterol is the carbon 27 molecule means in the structure it contains the 27 carbon atom and once the side chain cleavage enzyme act on the cholesterol the cholesterol will be converted into the new molecule that is the pregnenolone pregnenolone is the carbon 21 atom molecule the function of side chain cleavage enzyme is it will remove the side chain of the carbon atom from the cholesterol means it will remove the carbon atom side chain from 22 to 27 and now the new molecule form will be the pregnenolone that will contain only 21 carbon atom after that new enzyme 3 beta hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase will act on the pregnenolone 
and it will convert the pregnenolone into the progesterone so basically what happening in the chemical structure certain changes occur like at the third position the hydroxy or alcohol group is converted into the ketone its oxidation takes place and so on the shifting of the double bond from the position fifth to the third in the next step 21 hydroxylase enzyme act on the progesterone and it will convert it into the 17 hydroxy progesterone after that 21 beta hydroxylase enzyme again in these two steps basically hydroxylation is takes place now in this 17 hydroxy progesterone is converted into the 11 deoxy cortisol and in the last step 11 beta hydroxy enzyme will act on the 11 deoxy cortisol and it will be converted into the cortisol so this is how the cyclic process takes place in which the cholesterol is being converted into the final its molecule that is the cortisol so beside this over here this second step cholesterol then pregnenolone this pregnenolone can be converted into the other type of hormone like androgen how like this pregnenolone can be converted into the 17 hydroxy pregnenolone by the action of enzyme 7 alpha hydroxylase and in the next step the 17 alpha hydroxy pregnenolone is converted into a new molecule that is the dihydroepiandrosterone this dihydroepiandrosterone is usually the precursor for the synthesis of androgenic hormone like testosterone estrogen and progesterone so in the next step what is happening this dihydroepiandrosterone is converted into the carbon 19 molecule that is the endosteine dion the enzyme which is involved for the conversion of dihydroepiandrosterone into the endosteine dion is the 3 beta hydroxy steroid dehydrogenase in the next step endosteine dion will be converted into the androgen like testosterone in if testosterone is being synthesized then the enzyme 17 beta hydroxy steroid dehydrogenase will act on androstine dione and it will be converted into the testosterone testosterone can be directly converted into the estrogen by the action of aromatase enzyme so this is how androgen are being synthesized from the pregnenolone now let's look at the aldosterone biosynthesis the basic stimuli for the release of aldosterone are the low sodium level and the low blood pressure which will cause the activation of renin angiotensin system and this will cause the retention of salts second stimuli is the adrenocorticotropic hormone which is released from the anterior pituitary grain in response of corticotropin releasing hormone now this ACTH will go towards the adrenal cortex outer region zona glomerulosa and activate the G receptor protein and after that CMP will be synthesized and that CMP will initiate the protein kinase enzyme which will be responsible for the activation or phosphorylation of various enzyme involved in the aldosterone biosynthesis pathway now first of all progesterone the 21 carbon molecule will get converted into the 11 deoxycorticosterone by the action of 21 alpha hydroxylase enzyme 
Usually, what happens in the biosynthesis of aldosterone is a series of hydroxylation process in the structural changes. In the next step, 11 beta hydroxylase enzyme will act on the 11 deoxycorticosterone and it will get converted into the corticosterone. This corticosterone is now again act by the 11 beta hydroxylase. This enzyme is also known as the aldosterone synthase enzyme because it as it is involved in the biosynthesis of the aldosterone. So now this corticosterone will get converted into 11 hydroxy corticosterone. In the next step, 11 hydroxy corticosterone will be converted into the 18 hydroxy corticosterone. In the last step, 18 hydroxy corticosterone will get converted into the aldosterone. And in these all the steps, the enzyme involved is the aldosterone synthase. Now, this is how the aldosterone is being synthesized. The aldosterone function as a mineralocorticoid inside the human body. Aldosterone is not available commercially. The commercially available mineralocorticoid is the fludrocortisone acetate. Now these are some simple basic questions from today's lecture. Number one, what are the basic stimuli for the release of cortisol? Number two, what is the function of side chain cleavage enzyme? Number three, what is the role of 3 beta hydroxy steroid dehydrogenase enzyme? Number four, how progesterone is synthesized? Number five, from which region of adrenal cortex aldosterone is released. Now you can evaluate yourself after attempting these questions. You may post your answer in the comment sections and you can ask any query relating to this lecture. So this was all about today's lecture. Thank you so much. God bless you all.